Just on the, before I start, I'd just like to congratulate uh, Tellamore Rugby Club. I'm a big rugby fan. I'm delighted that they, I think they demolished uh, every team they played this year, every league they won. So fair play to Tellamore. Great to see the, the local side do well in the Midlands. Okay, so just on to ourselves, as Paul said, it's going to be two small presentations, myself in Cone Steel and then Scott Fisiana in Ventar. So just on Cone Steel, uh, we're over 100 years in business, and we basically evolved uh, all from Gore to County Galway uh, in builders, merchants, and in timber. And we, for many years, we had a premises here in Church Road in Tellamore. And I'm fourth generation. So, I don't know, the third generation loses it. I don't know what the fourth does, but we'll hopefully rebuild it again. And basically, we split the company in November of 1997, okay? So, uh, myself, my father, my brother now, we took over the steel then. And since 1997, we have sold over a million tonnes in Ireland, north and south of Ireland, predominantly construction steel, but also in agriculture, manufacturing, and engineering. And basically, when I looked at this, uh, when, we, when I spoke to Joe about presenting Joe Corbett Mainstream, who again has done great work, Joe, thank you, I took out one line in what I was sent, and it's, it's there, 5,000 megawatts. What is it? It's 650,000 tonnes of steel. Now, if you also look, as Andy uh, Kinsler said in his presentation, that there's also still another 2,000 uh, megawatts to do uh, without the export side. And hopefully, when we get this clear intergovernmental agreement, there's the offshore capacity. I mean, the word to me is, is scale. I, I'm, you know, for the last five years, I have I found business very difficult, and this is the first time I'm, I'm genuinely excited, you know? So when you look at steel relevance, uh, I've just split uh, all the different parts of a turbine, and as demand for energy increases, wind is seen now as one of the key current and future sources of electricity generation. Installed capacity of wind power is growing rapidly. Uh, electricity produced by wind turbines is generated with significantly lower lifetime CO2 emissions than the global average for electricity production. This helps to mitigate our impact on climate change. Now, steel plays a vital role in wind power generation. About 85% of the wind turbines around the world are installed in tubular steel structures. You can see there, normally about 100 uh, meters would, would use about 170 to 200 ton. Steel represents, on average, 80% of all materials used to construct a wind turbine. So if you look at areas in uh, the actual generator, there's electrical steels there, gearing and bearings. As I said, the, the tower is a huge part. The foundation, again, that connects it to the seabed or to the ground. And then the foundations. Now, and this is an area, this, there's much scope here in my opinion, to work with cement and concrete industry, precast industries, to spur the development of steel and concrete or steel around concrete solutions for wind energy. Also, with the increasing turbine sizes, it's, it's uh, putting an awful lot of, uh, it's threatening to outpace the capabilities of ports, lifting equipment, truck trailers and rail cars. And a week and a half ago, I was up in Belfast, and it was just a pleasure to see uh, what Dong Energy and Belfast have done there. They've spent 52 million on a 50-acre site for an offshore wind logistics terminal. And this whole area of partnerships, uh, it's, it's awfully exciting. It's, def it's, the way, it's the way forward. And another large uh, point on steel is steel is infinitely recyclable. So again, when you talk about scale, I just thought I'd use an example there of a comparison of car gearboxes and wind turbine gearboxes. And you can just see there, most of the larger tower manufacturers, if they can get three shifts going, you're looking at two to 300 towers a year. You can see there are four to six units. And you can see, you know, look right through it, the actual, the cost of a problem for these things, 300, 500,000. And it's just the sheer scale. I mean, I haven't been to many, I haven't seen many wind towers myself, but when you just see the size of a person and everything else, it's just the sheer scale of it, folks. And again, as Andy Kinsler said, if we're not going to take hold of this and grasp this as companies in Ireland, it's just going to, it's going to be gone for us. Now, it's, it's awfully exciting, but we have to grasp it and we have to work together in partnerships and really think it through. So, as I say there, we're open for business, Cone Steel. We're looking at all options of partnerships. Uh, we are, we, our main focus will be on foundations and towers, but we have local strength and global reach. 
and we will looking, we'll be looking also at sourcing specific steel products for the wind energy also. The scale and, and, and timing of the Energy Bridge vision will be known in the next six to 12 months. And if I say it again, we must grasp the opportunity. I'm now gonna pass you on to Scott Viciana to talk about Ventar. Thank you, David. So that's a good segue. Uh, the opportunity, it's clear. Uh, spending, spending some time here and, and talking with our colleague, David, I'm, I'm, uh, and our company's very intrigued with this opportunity with the Energy Bridge and other projects here. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our company, Ventower. Um, we are a wind tower manufacturer, and we are located in uh, Michigan, USA. Uh, we are a growing company uh, and eager to not only learn more, but to expand. Uh, this opportunity that I'm seeing in front of us uh, and the numbers that we discuss is, is very intriguing. Uh, it's part of our business model to expand and have multiple locations. And uh, seems like a good spot to continue the momentum, working with some of our colleagues on the ground, uh, Cohen Steel, uh, and some of our partners as well. So with that said, I'll kind of get into it, give you just a, a brief overview. Uh, since we're sharing time, I wanted to keep it brief and and uh, not to uh, overwhelm you here late in the day. So as, as noted, we're really, a, our, our sweet spot is utility scale, distributed scale. So to give you an idea, if you don't know, that's really in the 60 meter uh, to about 105 steel uh, tubular tower. Um, our customer really ultimately is the OEM, the nameplate on the machine. Uh, but in recent days, we've been dealing a lot more direct with uh, developers in the US uh, and the utilities as well. It's very important. Uh, to have all the, all the players involved. So uh, with our current equipment in place in Michigan, uh, our capacity is about 250 three-section towers per year. Uh, we're looking to model uh, that same uh, facility, uh, worked out all the kinks, so to speak, uh, and hopefully maybe bring this here at some point into, into Ireland. Um, our lessons learned and lessons failed uh, will be left aside and not brought here, and we kind of cut that uh, ramp up gap down, I'd say more than half the time. Our equipment really is state of the art. Uh, it's four wind towers, it's meant for wind towers, um, using uh, suppliers from around the world, really. Uh, rollers, welding equipment, uh, cutting tables, all uh, state of the art uh, equipment that we plan on bringing here to a, a potential plant as well. Uh, our team has tremendous experience within the industry. We've been building towers uh, for many years. Uh, all aspects of our plant, uh, from quality to fabrication, uh, and of course our, uh, our resources and our uh, shareholders as well. A great ex uh, experience within the uh, industry. At the same time, what we'd like to do is kind of simulate some of the partnerships we've created in the US, whether it's through the community colleges, uh, trade schools, uh, and the local folks on the ground, economic development, it's, it's a vital part to get a company up and running for a person who's been to Ireland twice. So uh, it's really important, really important, and we'd hope to tap into that resource here uh, as well. And you know, the simple graphic on the growth prospect, you've heard the numbers. Uh, folks at Mainstream have done a very good job spelling out their project, uh, and it's, again, uh, very intriguing from our company side. So just some of our unique advantages, which would translate here as well, um, is our, our metals experience. Uh, our ability, uh, and, and you see the list of the, of the two companies there above our logo on the right, uh, ability to procure steel, to finance it, knowing the steel market, and basically when you're talking about 80% of the cost in a tower is the steel itself, it's critical. It's vital to have that information and be able to pass along those savings to your customers. Um, we have that knowledge uh, based on our partners at RB Metalloid, uh, strong UK uh, steel trading company. They're our majority shareholder as well, and they're a great asset and, and, and bring that added value to our towers. Uh, our ability to double production, we can do that in Michigan as well, uh, hoping to ultimately do that here. We also have the opportunity to maybe close the gap with XM financing out of the US uh, to maybe make projects in the shorter term uh, more realistic, quicker, to get Ventower's flag in the ground here uh, more quickly. Uh, it's a strong option. Um, our partnerships, as I've mentioned and noted with our logos there, 
Uh, and again, our facility, which is really important, the location, having the water access, rail, and interstate highway. Uh, these are towers anywhere from three and a half meters up to six meter uh, diameters. It's a challenge getting across the roadway. A lot of folks in this room, you understand that and, and feel my pain. Uh, so the water access is key uh, the way we see it as well. So for credibility, uh, I wanted to l show you the, the, the folks in the, in the box there are our current customers. Uh, currently doing business with them or have done business with them. Uh, very happy with that list and obviously adding some of the folks from the bottom into that list as well. Uh, not everyone's on there, but uh, we're hoping to, to grow our market share in the U.S. Uh, some very, very uh, exciting opportunities there. And then of course doing that here uh, in Ireland and, and being part of this uh, movement uh, to providing power to the UK as well. So in a nutshell, uh, I was asked to maybe spell out what are some of the jobs and some of the things that we would bring uh, with what we do. Um, it's really straightforward, the supply chain piece, what all of my uh, colleagues here are discussing, but uh, it just gives you a quick laundry list of things on the ground that we need, steel sourcing, coatings, ladders, platforms, uh, welding equipment, I talked with the gentleman earlier about that, uh, tarps, packing materials, logistics, bolts, fixtures, fasteners. These are all support industries that would support our efforts uh, for the finished product. Um, incredibly important. And again, some of the skill sets we're looking for, uh, there's your list there, welders, painters, uh, engineers. Really, it's a, it's a resource that we've had uh, a lot of, uh, I'd say some luck, but some planned luck as well uh, in the U.S., uh, where our plan is really situated between Detroit and Toledo right on Lake Erie, and uh, a lot of folks out of the auto industry were able to really support our efforts there. Folks looking for work, uh, unemployment rate was about 13.5%, uh, and we were able to make it work and, and committed to the local content piece, and hopefully we'd be able to do that here as well. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Cohen Steel and Ventar, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.